engage in the movement of God in and through the Sacred Heart Province in a variety of ways. All of us, each of us, are called to remain faithful to the spirit of itineracy, the willingness to embrace new opportunities and actively pursue paths for our lives and for the lives of those around us that will lead to greater freedom, truth, peace, and hope. We do what our brother Giacomo, what our brother Jose invited us to this morning, namely to engage our lives together in a dynamic of creative fidelity. Fidelity to the grace of our origins and to a life lived, to a lived experience of a loving and a humble God. A popular Protestant preacher and writer speaks of this movement as a decided turn toward a purpose-driven life. Francis of Assisi calls it the gospel life, without loss, without loss. We are reminded that we are called to celebrate today, and that is precisely what we are doing here in St. Louis, in case you didn't know that. Friars of Sacred Heart Province and their lay collaborators and associates, well, we're pretty good at throwing parties generally. We look for any excuse at times to get together. However, the particular type of celebration in which we are engaged contains the seeds of a movement that is both promising and dangerous. The promise that if we open our hearts more and more to the mystery of God's love for us, an unbounded and unconditional love, and if we, like the Israelites and the members of the community of Jesus' beloved community, keep our eyes fixed on our abiding relationship with the Lord Jesus, who loves us and guides our lives, making possible those things that we for so long have held as impossible, we will find ourselves moving with a sense of purpose, energy, vitality, creativity, and even joy. More importantly, we will keep moving. We will not be satisfied to stay put and simply soak up that which might be offered to us by our ancestors in the province. The movement to which we, as members of Sacred Heart Province, and those associated to us by blood or by love belong is greater than the sum of all of our 150 years and more than 3,300 official members. This movement is not defined by past deeds, but by hearts and minds and souls that are open to the movement of God in each age and in each context in which we find ourselves. It is this spirit of openness and the capacity to embrace an ever larger circle of people from other cultures, languages, religious experiences, and geographical zones, which defines the greatness of individuals, religious communities, the church, and nations. This is truly countercultural to the context and the nation in which we find ourselves today. A nation built on building walls in place of bridges, bunker busting bombs in place of effective diplomacy, and an economics of entitlement in place of communities of compassion and care. Perhaps we can attribute to the Saxonian fires a modern day phrase used to identify our nature and charism as a primarily lay-centered social and religious movement, that of gospel itinerancy. And in the light of the Gospel of John, it is critical that we add one other dimension to this, a dimension that has been recognized the world over by our lay brothers and sisters who work and struggle with us, that of relational itinerancy. This type of itinerancy, demonstrated from the very beginning by the way the friars from Saxonia associated their lives with those of the people entrusted to their care, 
places the dignity of the human person front and center. This is what the broad circle in the text from Numbers represents. Not just the power of God to heal and to bring back to life, but also the power of an authentic personal relationship that God seeks to establish and maintain with each of us. It is this same spirit of itineracy, a relational itineracy rooted in the abiding presence of God and Jesus in each and every human person and in whatever circumstances the German-speaking, sandal-wearing, cashless robe men of the gospel found themselves. It is this that would define the way the friars would welcome and be welcomed into ever-expanding networks of pastoral and missionary opportunities. This same gospel-inspired relational itinerancy would quickly push the German friars to go beyond the pastoral care of German-speaking immigrants, the original community to which the Bishop of Alton, Illinois, would invite them to serve, to communities where French was spoken, Irish potatoes were steamed, vision quests and poems of respect and harmony with nature were chanted, Chinese rites of commemoration of ancestors were honored, polkas were danced, spiritual songs of freedom from slavery and Jim Crowism were sung. Mariachis and Marian festivities were celebrated. Amazonian communities of faith were visited and supported. African lay-based communities were encouraged and empowered. Athabascan social networks were honored and orientations the color of the rainbow were recognized. And now, the threat that if we do not keep moving, opening our lives and our stories to imagination and new possibilities, we will wither, we will die. 150 years of existence, perhaps rather 150 years of movement, provides us a wonderful opportunity to celebrate and give thanks for all that has been. But it also provides us the chance to say yes for all that is yet to be. Perhaps Stephen Covey says it best, live out of your imagination, not your history. We cannot lean on what God has done and be satisfied with the wonders that have taken place in our midst. We can draw energy and hope from these miraculous days, but we cannot stand still and hope past deeds will satisfy the longings of our world and our own human hearts today. Rather, we should use these incredible acts of faith and courage to help us more clearly see that to which we are being summoned today. And while we might not know what new forms this summons might take, nor do we know what future form our Franciscan witness will be framed we walk by faith, a faith that is grounded in the love of God poured out into our hearts, a love that knows no bounds and poses no conditions other than the condition to give as freely as it has been received. This will inevitably get us into some form of trouble or the other, either with the political, religious, other authorities, and it will cause disputes within and between our own members. If the movement, movement to which we belong, is truly of God, if we are true to the gospel life, we will God will find a way to make things work, to reconcile the differences, and transform that which is in need of redemption, healing, and change. <clears throat> 